My name is Spencer Martin. I am the Director of Athletic Bands at the University of Idaho. Um, I am also here with the help of Vader Percussion. And today we're going to talk a little bit about drum set. And really this video is kind of a guide and it's, it's to help those educators who maybe aren't percussionists and just to give them a few talking points and a couple things to watch out for that can help their percussionists get better. And again, there, there are so many great percussion teachers and so many great players out there. Hopefully you can take a few points from this and that they will help you uh, and help your students be more comfortable and play better. And so if you think back to one of the earlier videos we did, we talked a lot about technique and we talked a lot about body position. And the same thing really relates to drum set. And so when you're looking at how your students are setting up their drum sets, you really want to make sure again that, especially looking at the snare drum height, that it's, it's perfectly at the level where basically that their elbows are in and relaxed and that this forearm and wrist when at rest are basically straight and again if the drum is too low it's going to force them to either drop their wrist like this or to drop to a different type of grip and, and come down like this or if it's too high again it kind of gets in this puppy dog thing if you use that snare drum as your guide you can base everything off of that and again if you want the drums and the cymbals very close together so that there's less movement so that everything works for the student. So again, I have the snare drum here and then I do a slight reach. I can get to the high tom. If you look, again, my elbows for the most part are in and relaxed. Same thing with the floor tom. Now talking about how many drums and cymbals to set up, again, there are many different ways. What I like to do as a player and then also as a teacher, if it's, if it's jazz band, I like to take off that fifth tom and put the cymbal there. Um, especially the younger the drummers, sometimes it freaks them out. So over the summer vacation, I just accidentally lose that floor time. I don't know where it went. It was just gone. It takes that fight out of the equation. But the big thing about getting rid of that tom and moving that cymbal in is that when you jump up to play on the right cymbal, it keeps your elbow in this natural position. And since stylistically the amount you know, the type of music you're going to play in middle school or high school jazz band. Most of the time for jazz music, the drummer's going to be up here with the time playing. Speaking of technique, we had this control position also known as matched grip. What you're using with the cymbal now is um, basically you could call this either French timpani grip if you want to get technical or ride cymbal grip. It's the same type of thing and you just flip your thumb up like this. And you notice again it keeps my elbow in nice and relaxed and I'm playing right here on the cymbal. If I had that tom-tom here and I had, had to move the cymbal out, if you notice what happens is, is it moves my arm out and then I'm going to get fatigued because this is not a natural position. So speaking of the drums, you have, you have the snare drum, you have the high tom, and you have the floor tom. Let's talk about cymbals for a moment. You have the ride cymbal, you have the crash cymbal, and you have the hi-hat. Now these are nouns, but with the crash and the ride, they can also be verbs. So you can ride on a crash or crash on a ride. Basically what this means is to ride on a cymbal is you're going to use the tip, and the ultimate, like the best sound you're going to get is halfway between the, the bell and the edge. You can also ride on a crash cymbal, and you can ride on a hi-hat. You can also crash on all of these cymbals. And one of the things that young drummers do that makes them sound young and not as mature as a, as a player that's played longer is that when they crash, they don't do anything with it. They just do a crash. There may be musical times for this. Again, there's always, there's never 100% right or wrong. There are always musical times for that. But you'll find most of the time, the best sound you're going to get when you do a crash, one, is instead of using the tip, you're going to mostly use the shoulder almost all the time. And you're going to either hit it with a bass drum or a, sim or a snare drum. Those are going to give you your best sound. So again, ride with the tip. You don't need a drum with that crash with the shoulder and I'm holding this very very loosely loose enough that there's give here and there's give here if you go back to our other videos when we were talking about playing and the T1 gaps and all that stuff it always has to be loose enough that someone can pull the stick out of your hand it's the same thing if it's too tight you're going to absorb shock in your hand and actually you can absorb so much shock that you're going to crack the cymbal so if this is nice and loose on the shoulder down here with either a bass drum or a snare drum crashes. And then just lastly, two, two other things before we jump over here. Another thing to think about is where are your students playing the drum? The highest quality sound is going to be in the center of the drum. A lot of times students will, will unconsciously or subconsciously sneak away from that center. 
different sound. Now, if they're doing that for a musical purpose, that's a different that's a different scene. If they're going, this is the musical sound I want, that's excellent. But if they're doing it subconsciously, that's not giving them their best sound. So center of the drums, riding with the tip, crashing with the shoulder, lastly with the hi-hat. The best sound you're going to get with the hi-hat truly is going to be with the tip of the stick. It's going to give you the most control and it's just going to sound the best. And also, it's going to save your students from shearing off their drumsticks like this. Now again, are there musical times where your students should be playing with the shoulder? Absolutely. But if they're playing with the shoulder all the time, it just gives it an immature sound as opposed to up here. So. Again, hopefully a couple little tips that can help you as you're watching your, your percussionist play to make them sound better and sound a little bit older. Thank you.